To add dark mode to our website, we first need some elements in our HTML. All I have is a button with the class of theme toggle and an SVG icon inside it. Under the button, I also have an H1 that displays dark slash light mode. And under the H1, I have a paragraph that displays filler text. In my CSS, I don't have much. I just have what's needed for the layout to be in the middle of the page. Out of all this CSS code, the only important thing that is relevant to adding dark mode to our website is the CSS variables. We see at the top of the file, I have two color variables set up, a dark color variable and a light color variable. Then we see in our body element, I'm setting the background color to our light variable and I'm setting the color property to our dark variable. The reason this is important is because by using CSS variables, I can change the color in one place and have it affect the entire website. So for example, if I change color dash dark to color dash light, and also change color dash light to color dash dark, basically just switching them. When I save, we see our website is now in dark mode. I'll undo my changes and we see we're back to light mode. This is actually how we create the switch from light mode to dark mode by switching the names on our dark and light variables. The way this is done is by overwriting the variables with the utility class. Above my body selector, I'll create a utility class called dark dash mode. I'll copy my two color variables and paste them inside my dark mode utility class. I'll change dark to light and I'll change light to dark. To use this utility class over on the HTML, I can give the body element the class of dark mode. And now we see by adding the dark mode utility class to the body element, we've overwritten the default color variables and our website is now in dark mode. Now imagine, instead of us adding the utility class to the body element manually, that instead, we made clicking the button toggle the dark mode utility class on and off. To do this, I'll head over to my main.js, which by the way, I've already included as a script tag in my HTML. Inside main.js, the first thing I want to do is select the button by its class name. To select our button, I can say document.querySelector. Inside single quotes, I can select our button by its class name of .theme-toggle. Our query selector is just floating there in nothingness, so I'll store it inside a const variable called theme-toggle-button. I want the button to toggle on and off the dark mode utility class on the body element. To do this, I'll select our theme toggle button variable and give it the add event listener method. The add event listener method takes two arguments. The first is the event, which is a string. I'll set it to click because I want something to happen when I click on my button. And the second argument is a callback function. I'll use an arrow function for my callback function. Inside our callback function goes the code we want to run when the button is clicked. I want to toggle on and off the dark mode utility class on the body element. To do this, I'll say document.body.classList.toggle. Inside the parentheses of the toggle method, I can specify which class I want to toggle on and off. Inside single quotes, I'll say dark mode. Now, when I click on the sun button, our button toggles on and off our dark mode utility class on the body element, and our website goes from light to dark. We can actually see this better when I open the developer tools. Looking at the body element on my developer tools, we see clicking on the button element is toggling on and off the dark mode utility class. We've implemented dark mode to our website. Wasn't difficult, was it? However, we do have one problem. If I reload the page while the website is in dark mode, the website goes back to its default of light mode. This is because we need to tell our website to remember how we last left it. To do this, I'm going to use the browser's local storage. This is found in the developer tools on the application tab. We see we have a panel called key and we have a panel called value. This is because local storage works in key value pairs. To create a key value pair inside our local storage, I can say local storage dot set item. Local storage is an object and set item is one of the available methods we can call from the local storage object. 
the set item method takes two arguments. The first is the name of the key we want to create, and the second is the name of the value we want to create. Both arguments need to be strings, so I'll call the key theme, and I'll call the value dark mode. By the way, I purposely named the value dark mode the same as our utility class. This is on purpose. We want our value to have the same name as our utility class. When I click on my button, we see it added the key value pair, a theme, and dark mode. I'm happy this works. However, what I actually want to do is set our key value pair only when the body has the dark mode utility class on it. Otherwise, I want to remove our key value pair. Basically, when we're on light mode, I don't want to see a key value pair inside our local storage. And when we're in dark mode, I do want to see our key value pair. To do this, I'll add an if else statement above our local storage. Then I'll move up our local storage dot set item inside the if statement. This condition needs to check whether the body element contains the dark mode utility class. So inside the parentheses, I can say document dot body dot class list dot contains dark mode. The contains method will check whether dark mode is defined as a class on the body element. If body contains the dark mode utility class, we set our key value pair inside our local storage. Inside the else statement, I want to do the opposite. I want to remove our key value pair when the website isn't in dark mode. To remove our key value pair, I can say local storage dot remove item. The remove item method takes only one argument, the name of the key we want to remove. This argument needs to be a string, so inside single quotes, I'll say theme, because theme is the name of our key. Now we see, when we're in light mode, our local storage is empty, and when we're in dark mode, our local storage has the key value pair of theme and dark mode. Now all we did was create our local storage. We're still not telling our website to check whether we last left it on dark mode. So for example, if I reload the page on dark mode, we see it still brings us back to light mode. However, what we did do is save our settings into local storage. When I reload the page on dark mode, we see we still have our key value pair saved in our local storage. To fix the website, always going back to light mode, when we reload the page, what I want to do is check whether the key of theme exists inside our local storage when the page is first loaded. I'll create a const variable above our event called theme and I'll set it equal to local storage dot get item. The get item method only takes one argument, the name of the key we want to get. This argument needs to be a string, so inside single quotes I'll say theme because again, theme is the name of our key. I'll console.log our theme variable to see what it returns. We see the getItem method returns the value of the key we provided. Dark mode is the key of theme. So our theme variable is equal to the string dark mode when it does exist. Otherwise, if our local storage is empty, getItem would return null and the theme variable would be equal to null. Also, again, theme being equal to the string dark mode is purposely the same as the name of our utility class. Our utility class is also called dark mode. I'll remove the console.log, and under the theme variable, I'll add an if statement. This if statement will run the moment the page is first loaded. It's going to run the moment the page is first loaded because this if statement isn't inside a function or a callback. It's just there, floating in nothingness, and therefore will run as soon as the page loads. I want this if statement to give the body element the dark mode utility class if and only if our local storage isn't empty. So inside the parentheses, I can just say theme. The reason I can just say theme is because of something called truthy and falsy. Our theme variable will only return the string of dark mode if the key value pair exists inside our local storage. Otherwise, it will return null. If the theme variable returns the string dark mode, this is considered to be truthy. And if the theme variable returns null, then this is considered to be falsy. 
This is all the conditioning I need to check if I should add the dark mode utility class to our body element. Inside the curly braces, I'll say document dot body dot class list dot add. The add method only takes one argument. I want to add the dark mode utility class to our body element. So inside single quotes, I'll say dark mode. This code is going to work. If I'm in dark mode and reload the page, we see we come back to it in dark mode. Our code works and we've implemented dark mode to our website. However, I do want to make some improvements. Instead of giving the add method the string of dark mode, what I can do is give it the theme variable. This is going to work because the theme variable will return the string of dark mode. Also, because this if statement is only a one liner, I don't need the curly braces. Now our if statement is on one line. However, we can still do better. Instead of using an if statement, I'm going to use something called short circuiting. I'll remove the if keyword and I'll also remove the parentheses. In between the theme variable and the document.body, I'm going to add the and operator. This is called short circuiting and the way it works is the and operator is only going to allow what's on the right to run if and only if what's on the left is true. The AND operator is acting like a barrier and will only allow us to run this code if the theme variable is true, or in this case, truthy. In other words, this is like an if statement where what's on the left is the condition and what's on the right is the code we want to run. On our website, reloading the page while in dark mode, we see we stay in dark mode, and when we reload the page in light mode, we see we stay in light mode. Our code still works, however, we can still do better. At the top of the file, I'm going to add five comments. The first one is going to be called selectors. The second one, state. The third, on mount. Fourth, handlers. And fifth, events. The reason I'm doing this is because although our code works, it's not readable enough. It's one thing to have code that works, but to have code that is also readable, that's when you have good code. This is the structure I like to follow for most of my apps. The selectors is for selecting elements. I'll move our query selector under our selector comment. The state is for data that can be used globally and possibly changed or mutated. Our theme variable is a state because it keeps track of the state of our local storage. When theme is equal to dark mode, then our theme is truthy. When it's equal to null, our theme is falsy. This means our theme variable can change and is also used in other places in our app. This qualifies it to be a state and I'll move it up under our state comment. Unmount means something that happens when the page is first loaded. I'll move our short circuiting under our onMount comment because this line of code runs when the browser is first loaded. Handlers is a way to better organize our functions. Inside our event, we have a callback function that does something when the button is clicked. This is not actually readable code. What we can do is create a function under our handlers comment called handle theme toggle. I'm using an arrow function here, but you can use a regular function if you want. I'll copy what's inside the callback function and paste it inside our handler function. Now for the second argument of our event listener, I'll replace the callback arrow function for our handle theme toggle handler function. And I'll move the event under the event comment. Our code is now readable. Any developer that attempts to read this code will understand that this is selecting elements, this is our state, this is code that happens on mount, these are the handler functions, in our case we only have one, and by the way, the name of the function is readable to the point that a developer doesn't even need to read the code, by the name of the function alone, a developer will understand that this handler function handles the toggling of the theme. And lastly, we have our events. We only have one, but if we had more, they would all be easy to read because they aren't entangled with a bunch of callback functions. And there you have it. We added dark mode to our website. Our code is functional and above all else, it's readable. 
when I reload the page on dark mode, we stay in dark mode. And when I reload the page on light mode, we stay in light mode. If you enjoyed the video, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. I also have a Discord server. The link to it is in the description of the video. Have a great day and thanks for watching.